All right, so we My, put a piece of content out there. It's a checklist to make sure that a guest survey fits into a business, right? Everybody can do surveys these days. There's so many tools out there to do surveys. Do it yourself surveys, add-ons to software that people are already using in the hospitality business, whether it's point of sale, uh, excuse me, point of sale software in retail stores and in restaurants, as well as property management software for hotels. There's one other, and that's the add-on to email marketing software. There's every one of them has a survey add-on, a feedback survey add-on that, you know, everyone has a guest survey now, but is that enough? How is it integrated into the business? And we thought that as a public service, if you will, we were going to put out a checklist to show how we help businesses integrate a guest feedback survey into their business. So do you want to kick off with, uh, well, let me say by start by saying hello, good morning. We're, we're here on another episode of the podcast. I was on a little rant there. I'm sorry, but um, okay. welcome. The, the purpose of this document that we put out, this checklist, is to educate people whether they have an existing survey program out there already or whether they're interested in engaging a, co- a co- company like ours or our competitors in setting up a, a new survey program, there's more to it than a simple web form. There's a lot to consider. For example, when to send the survey, who gets the results, who gets certain results, and who gets other results, how to formulate the survey. There's a lot involved in a, in what many people think is just a simple feedback program. There's a lot more to it. And we're providing this document to show you some of the things that you should consider. The one thing that I would interject into what you just said is the real difference isn't in the survey itself. I mean, yes, there are. It's in the tools that come with it. It's in the tools that come with it and the handling of the data afterwards and where it goes and how we get it to, I mean, how do you get out of the feedback data that you collect? How do you turn that into insights that you can use i mean the survey itself is just a piece of it it's what it, it's all the things that you said that go along with it it's it right. sits at the center and then all the things sort of radiate out like spokes right. of a wheel from there is a difference between a just a survey and a survey program and a lot of people just do a survey do you remember back when we started this in the hospitality sector, one of our taglines was um, the benefit of just asking. There was a benefit back in those days of showing your customer that you were interested, that you cared by sending him a follow-up survey. And at the beginning, it, it was almost to the point where, they, first of all, they weren't responded to like they are today. They weren't accepted in the mainstream like they are today. So there was power. The power of asking was important because you were showing your clients. So the the hotel guests were important to the hotel. We did it on behalf of the hotel. So, but that's over. That's, that's no longer matter because they get surveys from everybody and any, and you know, any business transaction they do, they're most likely going to get a survey. So that's no longer important. I mean, it's always Uh, important to show your customers. Yeah. Well, I mean, now it's, it, it's, that is the bar it's expected, but I think the difference right. now is, uh, yeah, you got to do it. Everybody does it. So certainly you must do it. So, uh, to do it right. <laughs> you, well, you have to do it right, you but know. I would almost say that it take that, advantage of all the tools out there and all the features. I would almost say that you could sort of flip it. You could flip that tagline. It's like the power of not asking or the power of asking in a, in a, in not the best way possible. So yeah. what does that mean? Well, ask with a thoughtful survey, ask with an easy survey to complete, ask with a, with a survey that is relevant to guest experience in 2022. So the power of asking is being is asking in the right way. The power of asking in a way that doesn't take away from the guest experience you've already provided up to that point because the way you ask is part of the guest experience now right and right to your point that's very going, important i i think that gets gets lost a little bit that yeah. that taking the survey is part of their experience 
Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Let's say, let's say somebody has gone to one of the free tools that are out there. Let's say they've signed up for an email. They have an email marketing service, one of the big ones out there. And they all have like templates that you can use to, for a customer feedback survey or a guest feedback survey, and you can tweak right. them a little bit. Right. And somebody has to be responsible for it, right? I don't know who makes the decision with email marketing. Most likely, again, it depends on the size of the business. But let's say it's a small business. Let's, let's start with a small business. Usually it's going to be the owner or the general manager is going to decide that they need to have some sort of email marketing uh, software so they can do outreach and, and promote their business to current customers. And as part of that, they're going to ha- decide they're going to put a survey in there. Right. Great. Who's responsible for sending it out? And then who's going to look at the feedback? Who's going to look at the responses? And what are they going to do with that? And that's the basic idea behind this. Because it doesn't matter the size of the organization. That's the basic function. You have, a, you have a timeline. A guest checks out. Someone, some way you've got to get a survey to the guest. The guest is going to fill out the survey. And then things are going to happen afterwards. What are you going to do with that feedback? First of all, who's going to look at that feedback? Well, yeah. Right. Let's say it has specific things that, that require attention within the, the business or should require attention. I mean, if no one is really looking at it nothing's going to happen. And it could happen over and over and over again, that same thing. So the idea behind this checklist is to sort of gather all the resources and understand how a guest feedback survey can fit. And we start with like at the top of this, we're going to put a link to the, to get the checklist for yourself. But we start with stakeholders and stakeholders are all the pieces, all the people within the business who may be responsible for the things that are addressed in a guest survey, right? Managers, department heads, outside consultants, maybe. And when I say operational department heads, I'm talking about obviously guest services, housekeeping. This is in a hotel example, food and beverage, restaurant, it would only be food and beverage. Uh, and then facilities managers and engineering departments. And maybe on in some larger organizations, there is somebody who is responsible only for guest experience, but that's usually in a, a little bit of a larger business. And then on the marketing end, and here's where it gets tricky, you know, who's responsible for all this? Is it, is it management or is it the marketing department? Well, if it's been being driven by an email marketing tool, if that's what they're using, then a marketing person's going to be in charge of it, of it. And I don't know if that's if that's right. And then there's reputation management and people who are looking at reviews and, and dealing with, right. with uh, the backlash. Yeah, that's that social media managers. Right. Everybody is, is cognizant of the reviews and they have, to, they have to make sure that their reviews are as good as they possibly can be. So many of the things that are driving feedback surveys is to, to, to drive better reviews, more better reviews and less not so good reviews. So how does a guest feedback survey do that? Well, if you don't get actionable insights out of the feedback, it's not going to help. And further, if you don't get actionable insights out of the data that you collect to the right people within the organization, it's not going to help. And and all of those add-on services yeah, you probably could get something close to what we do and what our real, our true competitors do, not the add-on services to email marketing and point of sale and property management software and, and all that. Right. But it would be a big effort to do so and not worth it when you have tools that are set up just to do that. Again, it'll probably help if people download the checklist because look, not everyone's going to use our service. We understand that, but at least as a, a public service, I guess, this is out there. And if they're, if they're choosing to just say, all right, we're going to use the, a survey tool that's part of our property management software or part of our email marketing, at least this is going to give some structure to that. So but the important thing that you're saying is identify who's going to use that information and who needs to see identify it and make sure you have an avenue to get the right data to the right person. 
Yeah. And then so the I'm, data I'm, itself, again, you know, as you said, the tools on the back end are important and you're not going to get that from the right. add on the add-ons. Right. You're not going to get alerts from within surveys when a right. guest identifies a problem. But in a comprehensive program, when a problem arises, it goes right out to a department head, certainly a manager, and possibly a guest experience person if there is one there. Right. This checklist will help you decide, will help you learn about all the things that you should consider right. when choosing a survey program, ours or anybody else's. But if they're using it, I mean, it's not easy to, to turn on a dime and switch tomorrow, but whatever you're they using. They could call me tomorrow. They could call me tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we do turn things around quickly. But uh, if they're not going to call you tomorrow, uh, at least this gives some, gives some context and some thought as to how, you know, if you're, if you're using something, you are getting yeah. feedback, right? Make sure you're using it right. Get the most out of it you can. And and if, we, if we've helped Absolutely. you, if we've helped you, uh, follow, subscribe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll see you as a client down the line. I guess that's the that's the hope, right? Yeah. That, that we we know enough. We like, about to, what we we like to educate. You know, we like to educate people. We know what we're doing. Well, it calls to mind a very famous tagline from the New York area that no longer exists. Um, what industry? Clothing. Retail clothing. I'm drawing a blank, but... Well, uh, it's Cy Sims. It's Sims. It's uh, Cy Sims, yeah. I got to look again. An educated consumer is our best customer. That's and true. That's actually very good. It's actually fitting, yeah. It's, it's true. true. That's why it's we do true. these things, right? It's true. Very good. Maybe not tomorrow. You might not get the call tomorrow, but hopefully down the road we'll have... We'll have... <laughs> Showing people the way. All right. So we'll see you all on the next episode. Thank you all for watching.